Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts with one more for the night. I felt like it was only right to share my father's advice to me that saved my life numerous times. Listen to this. <clears throat> I lend you my father. These are the talks we used to have, and I'm going to imitate, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to imitate him sharing advice with me. Okay, this is my pop talking. You know, Patty, <clears throat> I know that, uh, you're a lot like me when I was a lad. <laughs> and I want you to know that I don't want you to fall into the same pitfalls I fell into. So I'm going to warn you ahead of time. Now, when you're at those nightclubs <clears throat> and you're hanging with some of your buddies and you think they're nice because they smile at you and they say nice things and, and they include you in their crowd. When you see a bunch of men getting together, I don't care if you think you've known them for two or three years, and they've all been drinking a little too much, don't you get in the car with them if they say, oh, go on a joyride with us. Now, my father told me, um, that's enough imitating, <laughs> but my father told me not to get in the car with drunk men who just want to go on a joyride. He said because it is a perfect setup for either a multi-gang rape or a murder, something that could end in murder. He said what they usually do is these guys will get drunk and they would take you to a secluded place and make it sound all romantic and fun where nobody can get in on your business and you can do what you want to do. But they don't tell you until they get you there that what their real plan is, is to rape your behind. Well, guess what? <clears throat> Shortly after he shared that little scenario with me, three guys from a club I used to hang out at invited me on a joyride. And dum diddy dum dum got in the car and rode with them. Because they're nice guys. They're insurance men. Right. They were drunk as a skunk. And when we got to riding, I noticed we were heading up in the mountains. And when they started talking about, girl, we can have some fun. You know, we can take you and do blah, blah, this, and we can... Boy, we one after the other. Boy, we can have our way with you up in here. You can scream all you want. Nobody would hear you. And what do I hear in my mind? You know, Patty, you shouldn't do that. So now that I'm feeling really stupid, I have to come up with a game plan. Thank God for my father's instructions because now I know I'm in trouble. And I got to figure out how to get out. Now, one thing I know will turn a man off quicker than anything is vomit. So, <clears throat> I start telling them that I'm starting to feel nauseous. And I think I need to get, I must have eaten something bad. Because I'm playing like they're joking with me. Oh, you guys are so silly. Oh, you're so. <laughs> and I said, oh, what did we eat? Something went bad in my stomach. Oh, what you talking about? I'm getting nauseous. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord, I think I'm getting a case of diarrhea. I mean, <laughs> I was laying it on so thick. And those dummies went for it. Thank God. Well, they turned around. Don't be throwing up in my car. They turned around and go down the hill to find somewhere I could use the restroom. And I said, oh, let's go to this hotel. I'm running here real quick. So they pull up in the parking lot. I jump out. I tell the uh, the guy at the window what's happening, right? It's really a, a jip joint. I mean, it's a pitiful place, place where guys take prostitutes all the time. And a few wanderers would go in there and, and rent a room because they're really doing business. But, you know, it was, it was a real dump. But it was right there. And I, I, I told the guy what these guys had planned to do and what they told me. 
And the guy said, well, a guy, a John just left the room. He said, if you don't mind hanging in there till they leave. He said, you can sleep there if you want. I don't care. He said, but, uh, but if you want, if they don't leave, I'll call the police. But if they do leave, you can stay there all night if you want to, because it's so late. And that's the way I got out of it. They thought I was in the room throwing up and doing my business. And I was just peeping out the window waiting for them to finally get tired of waiting and take off, which they did. Now, here's another scenario. My father told me he met a guy. I had uh, He hadn't met him. I take that back. I told him about a guy that I had met. Now, I tell you, young people, listen to your parents, because there are times that even though you guys may not be walking with God, because God has love for us, he protects the dum-dums, okay? And he will give your parents a certain amount of insight that will make you wonder, you know, what psychic hotline have they been calling? So, anyway, my father... I told him about this guy named Richard I met. He hadn't met the guy. He hadn't seen him, didn't know anything about him. And I didn't tell him anything because I knew he wouldn't like it. <clears throat> so he tells me, you know, you better watch out for that guy. I have a feeling that he's the kind of guy that will try to get you to sell your behind on the streets. You watch him. He's, he's probably one of those would-be pimps, you know, don't know what he's doing. But and I'm looking at him like, how did he know? So, but I'm thinking, okay, he's taking it a little far. I knew the guy wasn't about nothing. I wasn't interested. It was just something to kill some time. But do you know that guy tried to talk me and another, another lady I knew into uh, 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 letting him drive us to a... a a nightclub <clears throat> where nobody knew us in a different neighborhood. So we did. We let him drive us there. Then he lower, he lowers the boom and tells us, you know, we could make money. And he wants us to go in the club. <clears throat> Excuse me. He wants us to go in the club and find some Johns. And we could use his van. How nice of him. We went in there and shot pool and just laughed at him. We said, what a fool. He wants to be a pimp. And I told him what my father said. I said, you know, my father told, warned me about this guy without ever meeting him. He read his mail just like that. Here's another one. <laughs> I'm telling you back to back. My father had warned me about so many things out on the streets. He really had. One of the things he told me was we would sit on the couch and have these talks. I used to love it. <clears throat> he told me about not letting, and you ladies listen to this, and you men, you young men, who may have some older man that's taken a little too much interest in you, you watch it. I hate to say it like this, literally, you watch your behind, okay? But my father told me when somebody wants to shower you with too many gifts, they want to buy you a little something, something, take you to the store and take you to nice restaurants, and they want to give you, you need money here, take some money. You need to pay that bill? Come on, I'll help you pay the bill. Well, trust me, the way my father described it is what they're doing is they're purchasing you Payment by payment. And as far as their minds work, they own you. And one of the lines you will hear when you don't want to play according to their rules is, What the hell you think I've been paying all that money on you for? And they really, really are sick enough to think they have the right to make you do what they want you to do because they paid the price. Nobody asked them. They offered, did they not? It was supposed to be a gift, was it not? However, some gifts 
come with a price tag that your behind can't cover. So it behooves you not to be so quick to receive. Do you hear what I'm saying? Be careful with that. Young men and young ladies, be careful about Trojans bearing gifts. You be careful about that. That's a term. Now listen, <clears throat> I say all that to say, this is just my warning night. I just feel in my spirit to warn, to enlighten, to, to uh, it looked like a wake up call. There are some demons out there that are manipulating folks to do some of the craziest mess. Don't get caught up with it, you guys. Please don't get caught up. Because sometimes you can get locked in with someone and see there's a spirit. I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, but I hope you can, you, you, you can make sense out of this. There are people out there, especially abusers and, and, and molesters and all of that. There's a certain charm, a certain charm and a certain magnetism that works. <clears throat> they don't call it magnetism for nothing. Magnets draw. Once magnets draw, if that thing keeps getting closer and closer and it makes contact, let your imagination go with contact. When you try to pull it apart, the, the thing has such a strong hold that sometimes you need help getting away. It's a battle getting them apart once they're connected. You hear me? Some have died trying to get away from the person who has trapped them in a very toxic, deadly relationship. And they're the ones with the most charm. Be very, very careful. Don't date somebody who never wants to go around your family, doesn't want to be around your friends, has a jealous streak, very possessive, shows up where you don't want them to show, invites themselves in where you haven't invited them, pushy, controlling. You watch those people. Those are the ones. Those are the very ones that'll take your life, snap it out in a minute if you don't dance to their tune. So you watch who you're drawn to because some magnets can be deadly. Do you hear me? Listen for the sake of your life. God bless you.